Got two halves of the catamaran. There's the first two cuts. I mean, I'm using a Dremel here, but if you were using a large pipe, you'd use a angle grinder with a cut disc. Be the same result. So, just up, upscale to a larger machine, but it'll be the same concept. So here's my latest. I make a line and just a little cut here. And on the other side, I make a V shape and a cut right across a little wider. I put it in an oven. Uh, one just now. Oh, this is it here, see? And I squeeze it in the oven. It didn't get any kind of like the melting in that, but you get the form real quick and maybe come out to the torch in. I'll see. A little, uh, little um, stove I have in the kitchen. So I'm all ready for shaping. I just got to take the uh, paper off and start heating. Stove here for um, drying dinky toys once, but now I make cheese sandwiches on it. So, you know. So much for that. I bought it for 10 bucks or something and I was going to have my dinky toys dry but I put a dinky toy in and overheated it once and that was the end of it. But now it's my cheese toast unit. But today it's PVC bending. It's going to take a while to heat here so. If you get it to a certain heating point, the plastic is still in really good shape and then you can pinch it closed like this and it actually kind of bonds here in the front. And there you got, I got beginning to get the shape, see? Yeah, I've gone back to the hot gun. Just, I've got this fairly good shape on both of them now. And as you can see, I haven't burnt anything, thank God. For once. Now I'm going back to the blow gun to heat this up. Stay away a good two inches from the blow gun. I want to have a little bit of a slant down here in the end when I grind, so I'm going to push this in a little. Yeah, I got a little carried away. I have some melting here, but we're going to fix that right now with a hot iron. I'm just going to grind it up a little, and then I'll try to clean it up and then grind it again. There's my two bowels right now for my catamaran. Yeah, I'm just welding with the hot iron. Some of these little cracks closed. You can imagine about, I almost like put the ABS weld in there and then I pour some ABS weld down the back as well to make sure it's sealed. What's in interesting is you can take a junk of plastic and actually put it in the hole or put it over top of it or a bit of ABS, a junk piece and you can actually fill in the gap there and it takes it quite nicely. I mean, it's more for look because you're going to have it totally sealed inside as well. That's pretty good. I'll shape it and grind it and show it to you. I much prefer this. I've seen a guy that just cut a slant down here and put a, a cap on. It was actually a better way than just having a flat uh, front. But um, this is even more stylish if you can do it. The end result's pretty good. Here are my, here's the one, I'm just sanding it down and it's looking good and here's the other one. So there you go, they're done. There's my two pontoons. For a catamaran or whatever you want to do. So that's a start anyways. So problem solved at last. I don't know how that would uh, fare out on a um, larger bow, I'd say, you know, if you had a 12 inch pipe It'd be fairly difficult, but I'm sure it is possible to do this. So, but I do see why the guys cut back at a, a slant on the tube like that and just put a plate on, because that's quite a bit of work, but it's worth it in the end when you have a really good look like that, uh, you know, on your boat. So, sometimes you gotta put a little effort in. I'm also thinking how to um, have a insert here and put these together so you have a half and a half so you can transport really easy on a car. I'm not too sure how far big a piece I can put on a car, but I'll go to get, get to that in a while.